episode of Teasing Your Money. I hope you enjoyed those moves with Peter. I'm not able to keep up, but I'm sure you did. So in this episode today, we're going to do our upper body. I need you to pick this. You know, if you have a pillow with you, we're gonna use that pillow today, um, which I know most of you have. And if you don't have a, a pillow with you, just get something that you can, you know, uh, get in this shape and we will use it. It doesn't have to be a pillow. You can fold, you know, a bed sheet. You can get, just get something that you can use that can replace that pillow. And then you remember our plate? Yes, we're still going to use this plate today. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to grab your pillow and grab your plate. Today is upper body. We want to make those arms toned, right? And we want to make sure our back is, you know, we're burning that back fat. And um, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to pick up what we need for today. I'll put a timer of 30 seconds for us to pick up whatever we need for the day so that we are able to proceed. Get yourself a pillow, right? And get yourself a plate. Today we are going to work the shoulders, that back, right? Perfect, perfect. The time is almost up. I hope you pick something. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I can see you. Right, right. Let's begin this day on a new normal. Remember I say, um, my name is Evelyn of Eval, E-V-E-A-L, Health and Fitness. And we are in teasing new money. Okay, so we are going to start by warming up, right? Today we are going to do the jumping jacks. Remember, if you have an injury, move, 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 move. And if you don't have an injury, we're going to do that, okay? So the beginners, you are going to do, actually, the beginners, the advanced, we are all going to do 20, right? And if you're injured, we are going to do 15. So you're going to do that because of less impact. Okay, let's do this together. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Rest time starts now. Walk around. Yes, I can see you are still sleeping. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Let's do this together. Right? I'm enjoying this whole process. Ever since I started this new normal, I wake up early, put in the workout, and everything changes. So, uh, let's do this together. Five more seconds to go for the next uh, set of warm up. We're going to do that times three. Let's go. One, two, three, move. Remember I said if you have an injury, you're doing that. Right? Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Perfect, 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 perfect. Your rest time starts now, walk around, breathe in, out, walk around, breathe in. I hope you all got your pillows or something that would help you in life that resembles a pillow. You can fold a bed sheet or you can get a towel. It will still do the job and your china plate. Walk around, breathe in and out. There we go. Last set. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well done, well done. Now we are going to go down, right? And we are going to do push-ups. So, for beginners and the elderly, you can go down on your knees, get a soft surface that you can go down on your knees. 
and go down and push yourself up one down you can lie flat on the ground then push it up all right make sure your body weight is on your arms because we are trying to turn these arms don't go down and drop yourself back you'll be removing the weight from the arms which will uh, not make the arms gain a lot but if you have a wrist injury you might be forced to ease off the weight just depending on how you feel your body let's go beginners and the elderly we're going to do 12 advanced remember we're doing proper push-ups we're also going to do 12 all right so when I mean when I say proper push-ups this is what I mean that your knees are not on the ground all right one two three start one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve now here's the thing there are those beginners who can do a few reps without putting their knees down and then um uh, the, the arms just give up in the course of it it's okay you can do half half you can do six normal push-ups and then you do uh, six on your knees it's okay eventually you'll be able to do the whole 12 with your knees not on the ground let's get, uh, get started on our rest starting now I know I know yeah yeah I can see you you is trying to do that push-up and you can't just leave the ground just keep trying slowly by slowly you can try by easing off the weight by moving the weight a little bit back but eventually just know the right form is having your weight right on your arms okay so it's fine to start slowly and build the strength for it we have there we go hands up let's go for our next set starting now remember beginners you can start here or start with the normal push-ups and then I'll proceed to the, the, the easier push-up if you're not able to complete the 12. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Perfect, perfect. You did well. You did well. Our rest time starts now. Walk around. Breathe in. Take some water. Right? Right. Breathe in. And take yourself some water. Hydrate, 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 hydrate. Yeah? Take fruits rich in vitamins and hydrate during this period and just work out put in the workout in this new normal so that you feel as you know you release those happy um, hormones endorphins let's go for our last set starting now one two three move one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, and 12. Well done, well done. You did amazing. Our rest time starts now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Pick your pillow and put it down. Put it down. We're going to use it in our next worker. So, Place right here in the center, right? I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate. We have, uh, there we go. So we are going to be here. Hold and pull it that side. Hold, pull it that side. One, pull it that side and pull it that side. Two, pull it that side. So, in as much as we are strengthening the arms. We are also trying to get the, those abdominal muscles tight. 
Now, I know there are people who are not able to suspend themselves in the air, so it's fine. You just do that and pull, pull it there, and pull, pull it there. Pull, pull it there, and pull, pull it there. Remember, even if you're elderly and you're able to do it by holding that position, please go ahead and do so and don't feel limited just because I'm saying the elderly, the young, the old. No, do not feel limited whatsoever because if you can do it, you are able to do it and you should be thankful for that and just um, do it. Let's start. Uh, we're going to do the advanced. You will do uh, 15, beginners 12, and uh, the, the young ones, because I know the babies are, are also now, the, the ones jumping around, the ones not in school, right? They'll do 10. But if they can go more than 10, let them do so. Let them enjoy the process. So, starting now. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. I'll not look at this pillow the same anymore. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Well done to all those beginners who actually say through with that. That's very, very well done. I mean, it's not easy to do this, so our rest time starts now. So we are resting for 30 seconds, starting now. Breathe in and out. In and out. We have 10 more seconds to go. Walk around. Walk around, walk around, walk around, walk around. So we're going for the last set. You put it out here and let's go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. 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 Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. And fifteen. Well. Done. Well done. Our rest time starts now. Take some water. So in our next workout, still using the pillow, we're going to do that one. Bring it to your chest. Be in the bending position. Secure your back. All right? Perfect. You are just bending over. Remember, bend to a comfortable position. But make sure your backbone is locked to secure your whole frame. With your backbone locked, it makes your whole frame and abdominal secure your body frame. So, we are going to do 15 for advanced, 12 for beginners. And... Uh, also, the babies or the, the juniors can do whatever reps they feel they are comfortable with, anything between uh, 10 and 15. But also, the elderly, you can do repetitions that you're comfortable with. 
preferably between 10 and 15. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And in between, in between, we're going to do use our plate, take it forward and take it up one. So we the advanced are going to do 15, the beginners are going to do 12, and uh, the elderly and the young ones can do anything between 10 and 15, depending on comfort. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And then, just holding your arm, arm in a fist, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like you're pouring milk from a jar. Fourteen and fifteen. Perfect. So our rest time starts now. We have thirty seconds, and then we go back to the pillow and go back to our plate and use our arms. Okay. Perfect. We are trying to turn this upper body so that we are not only killing it here but we're also killing it up here right we have 10 more seconds to go walk around don't sit down in the middle of a workout because you don't want to feel tired in the middle of your workout walking around really helps just that getting that flow in right let's go back to the pillow remember secure your back and your frame and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, let's go uh, with the plate. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, it's burning, 13, 14, and 15, let's use the arm, 1, 2, 3, move, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. We have one more set to go. Our rest time starts now. We are going to do the last set of this workout starting now. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Perfect. Get to the plate. Holding our plate. Let's go. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Then to the arms, to the arms, to the arms. Let it burn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Well done, well done. Our rest time starts now. We're going to our last workout of the day. Our rest time starts now. So I'm going to demonstrate our next workout. You go down, come up. One, down, up, two. Okay, we are going to do, for the advanced, you're going to do 15. Beginners, 12, right? I know, I know, there are those people who can't balance themselves again. So you're just going to be there and do that. Be on your knees and do that. The elderly are gonna do the same. Trust you me, those juniors are able to push more than you think. Let them do whatever style they are able to do. If you're only able to do half of the one suspended and then you go to your knees, it's okay because today we are working out that upper body. Okay, our first set starts now. So, one. Two, three, keep going, keep going, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Well done, well done. But before we go to our rest, we're gonna do something in between. I'll show you there. So, you're here. One, okay. We're going to do 15, lying down. You're taking your hands to the front and pulling it back. All right. 15, starting now. Remember the beginners can do 12, the elderly can do anything between 10 and 15, depending on energy and strength level. Starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you're squeezing that back, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, you're doing well, and fifteen. Well done, well done. Our rest time starts now. You're doing well so far. Walk around, don't sit down. Remember, you can take your water, hydrate, and keep your vitamin C in. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's do this, let's do this. We have 15 more seconds to go. We are almost done. This is our last workout. So give it your everything. If there's anyone around you who is not awake yet, just tell them to come and do this. The last workout, right? Perfect, our time's up. We're going to start with this. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, nice and slow. Four, five, gently go down so that you don't hurt your elbow. Six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13, 14, and yes, 15. Well done, well done. That's set number two. We are going to the line one before we do our rest. Okay, so you sit lying down, you pull back and squeeze your back. Okay, we're trying to get rid of that upper back fat. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nice, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and yeah, fifteen. Perfect, perfect. We have our rest time starts now, and we have one more set to go. Clap for yourself this far because we are almost done with today's workout, and you did amazing. One more set to go. Our rest time starts now. Remember to hydrate, take your vitamin C, take a lot of fruits rich in vitamin C during this season, okay? We have one more second to go and time's up. So we are going to do our last set. If you're a beginner and you've been doing 12, this is the time to challenge yourself. Give it your all. You can do 15 with us. If you're an advanced and you feel like going beyond 15, let me not be your hindrance, please. And if you're elderly and you're able to do 15 or above, why not? Push it. It's the last set anyway. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure your midsection is not sunken in such a way that you are uh, feeling straight on your back. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Well done, well done. Now let's go for the last round of that, right? Challenge yourself. I'm thinking maybe the advanced, let's do 20, right? The beginners can do 15. And the elderly, you can choose which to do. But anything between 10 and 15 is a good number. And the young ones, let them go, just let them fly, okay? So let's do this, we are doing 20. It's the last set, let's kill it. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, five more, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and 20, you did it. Yes, you conquered your day. You started your day on a new note. Look out for Peter in our next episode. And you did amazing today. Well done. And see you in the next episode. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.
by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Our world felt like a storybook. We were unstoppable. She never wavered from the vow she made to me on our wedding day. I wish I could say the same. The greatest gift a father can give his children is to love their mother. I'm saying that I never loved you. I'm always going to have to live with the guilt of what I've done to my family and the shame. Heaviness and a burning inside, it could be heartburn. Indigestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in six seconds and works on the six symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non-stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. This is NTV. Hello East Africa, a very good morning to you this Monday the 4th of May. Welcome to Your World, a show that brings you tips, information and experiences from East Africa and around the world to help you adjust to your new normal. My name is Joseph Warungu and I look forward to receiving your comments, questions and videos via our hashtag new normal or by phone and WhatsApp on the menu today. People across Kenya and the world are finding it hard to behave and follow government guidelines during this pandemic. Fifty-seven worshippers were arrested for contravening guidelines barring congregating. The worshippers claimed that they mis misinterpreted a court ruling regarding alternative ways of worship. <laughs> Movie fans blocked to Lithuania's main international airport to enjoy a drive-in cinema just meters away from planes which have been grounded by the coronavirus pandemic. Police. Women were sent into quarantine after being found at a friend's wedding party in contravention of the directive against public gatherings. Now, let's look at the coronavirus situation around the world, starting with the global scene. As at this moment, there are 3,562,269 people who have been confirmed positive for coronavirus. 1,153,071 people have so far recovered, while 248,094 have died from uh, the illness. Uh, back closer home to our situation, uh, that's Kenya today. So far, 23,780 people have been tested, 465 have been confirmed positive, 24 people have sadly died, and 167 people have recovered. Uh, in East Africa, if I can just go to what, uh, just get you the numbers and the figures for East Africa. Yes, here we are, in a moment. Yeah, so Tanzania. Uh, let's, this is the situation in Tanzania, 480 people confirmed positive, 16 people have so far died, 167 people have recovered. In Ethiopia, 135 positive cases, 3 deaths and those who have recovered, 75 in total. Somalia has got 722 people who have been confirmed positive, 32 people have so far died, 44 have uh, recovered. 
Elsewhere in the East African region, South Sudan, 46 people have been confirmed positive. No one has so far been confirmed dead and there's been no cases of any recovery so far. In Uganda, the cases stand at uh, 88 confirmed positive. No one so far reported uh, dead. 52 people have recovered. In Rwanda, 255 people have been confirmed positive. No one so far reported dead. 120 have been uh, have recovered. In Burundi, 15 people confirmed positive so far. They have confirmed one death as at this moment, and seven people have recovered from the coronavirus. Now, as the government continues intensifying the fight against the spread of COVID-19 across the country, one being the living number of mourners allowed to attend burials, professional mourners from Migori County now want the numbers to be reviewed since they are incurring losses on a daily basis, adding that they do receive calls from their customers across the country, but because of the lockdown in other areas and curfew, their business has seriously suffered. NTV's Vanaru Joang visited them and filed this report. Well, as business community continue raising their concern over the dwindling economy following the outbreak of coronavirus worldwide, a group of youths here in Migori County involved in professional mourning business are now saying that they are the most hit since the government limited the number of mourners in funerals and they now want something to be done. We sought to know why and how. Our journey started in the Migori Town Central Business District heading to Aruba, Ragana, Suna West constituency, where the professional mourners live. <laughs> Head of the Ghanaian pole bearers. Well, this is the Migori version. We found them practicing, not quite for an upcoming funeral, as such gathering have been banned, but just to show that theirs is a profession that requires good profession. These young men from Migori make a living from the dead, literally, helping families and friends mourn their loved ones. 24-year-old Daniel Ochien, commonly known as Jamdoz Mwenyewe, the group founder, says that together with his colleagues, they'd been laughing all the way to the bank previously from their professional cries during burial ceremonies. But now with COVID-19, they are neither crying nor Laughing. The <laughs> Imagine me now na kama inaweza fika 450,000 huko 600 ni pesa mingi. Wewe tunaonewa kabisa. Hatuwezi ingia pale watu 15 ni kidogo sana. Wangeweka ikue watu uh, kaa 30 hivi tungefikt hata hata watu wawili wakuwe hapo ndani. Walie Jioni tupate hata kitu. Ocheng explains that they passionately cry for the bereaved, evoke emotions and paint a somber mood at an agreed fee. They charge at least 1,000 per session and their package can include a three-part ceremony or depending on the pay. The first part is when the body is being taken from the mortuary to the homestead, where they cry so hard and convincingly to the extent that people who did not know the deceased would hold the departed in high regard. Kuna procedures in yuwa tunafuata sana sana tukitoka pale kwa mochari tukenda nyumbani. Hapo uh, katika tunapata kama watu kwa nyumbani pia wanatusaidia juu analea hapo katika juu tukianza pale tukikuja nyumbani pia usiku tunaanza. Lakini tunapata kama wakati wengine watu wame relax, wame relax kwa boma sana ni kupiga story, hey ba bro umetoka wapi, hey, mini toka kosi, hivi nafanya kazi hivi, vitu kama hizo. Lakini sa hizo, tukiona kama watu wame concentrate kuchat sana, watu kuangea wangea mingi na wanajua likuja kwa matanga. We keep them awake. Zaza hiyo kazi ya mbali ya kugusa sanduku ya kufanya mimi hapo ndio itabidi ama mwenye alituita aone eti hawa sasa anafanya mimi tufanye nini ndio atatuongeza pesa hapana 
Many have argued that it is wrong to make money from funerals or people who are grieving, but for these lads, it is a job just like any other since their work is to evoke emotions. Wana replaceiwa na wale watu wenye wame, wamezaliwa. Na nikitu wenye kwa hapo ni kama kuenda shuleni. Na ni kama kutafuta chakula. Sazi tunajua mtu mpaka kufe, tutapata kazi. Do their family members know what their job entails? You may wonder. Bibi yangu, nini mchukua kama tunafanya yu kazi. Sasa wisi kunichukua kwa sababu nini muambia eti kazi ambayo tunafanya ni hiyo. Ya, hakuna kazi ingine. Kwa sababu siwezi kudanganya itinafanya kwa boda boda ama nifanya kwa ofisi na kesa nione kama naanza kulia. Hata tuseme kama hiyo matanga mbao nimeitua pale. Ni, niende na ye pia kwa hapu. Alafu hama vile nalia. E, so mpaka ye pia appreciate uche nye nafanya juni kazi yangu. E, mi sifanyi kwa mochari lakini nafanya yu kazi ya professional mwona. Mimi siyo muizi lakini yu professional mwona ndiyo ye pia kule. Sasa hae ya naweza kukata kwa nini. Good professional mourners say they enjoy what they do and their business is growing day by day and getting clients countrywide. But COVID-19 pandemic is killing their business. What we are doing is to help them. We are doing our manasses. We are doing our work. 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 We are doing Ukishia gundua kitenye na kunaweza fanya upate pesa mingi ama pesa mzuri. Hakuna haja ukimilie uko. Jiupate ili yu bado ni prosesi mingi. Banado Juang, NTV. Now, NTV recently reported how the mother who ordered an ambulance to drive home her son and the friends he'd been drinking with during curfew time was suspended by her employer. But it wasn't clear whether the mother who abused her position as a supervisor with Kenya Red Cross Affiliated Emergency Medical Services will face criminal charges. NTV's Oli Barrows with that report. Isn't it hilarious? Who's the, who's the patient? <laughs> No patient in the back of this ambulance, just a group of teens having a jolly good time. Mama commandeering an ambulance to take Baba and his friends home after they were caught out parting past curfew. And they evidently thought that reducing an ambulance driver to their own personal chauffeur was so funny. They just had to share it with their followers on Instagram. No shame in flaunting their privilege. This is Kenya after all, and impunity is its middle name. Tragically for us, this was just another day in Kenya. Two days ago, there were young people who wanted to beat the curfew to go to a party, and guess what they got to go for the party with? An ambulance. That's how bad it gets. You take an ambulance under the guise of uh, sickness to go and hang out instead of leaving the ambulance for the kind of uh, purposes that you're asking. So how does one hitch a ride aboard an ambulance to keep the party going as others risk their lives and those of their children on the COVID-19 front line? A staff member had requested for a dispatch of an ambulance to check on a son who was said to be stranded without further details. The dispatcher released the crew and on arrival found that the staff's car had broken down and he was with his friends. So the ambulance left South Sea to go to Nairobi West where he found them and from there they proceeded uh, to a residence in Kileleshwa using Gong Road. Now that the cat is out of the bag, the supervisor who called for an ambulance to take her son home after a day of drinking has been suspended. We have taken the necessary disciplinary action on all the staff involved and implicated in this matter. <laughs> But for a people who only wear seat belts for the benefit of police and form WhatsApp groups to avoid alcohol blue roadblocks, it's all fun and games. 
And with the projected 28,000 lives on the line, will Kenya close ranks against an external aggressor or wage battle with itself to its own undoing? This is not a time for cut and mouse games. Olive Barrows, NTV. Curfew breakers, quarantine jumpers. Today we're looking at social irresponsibility, an example you've just seen there. And my guests this morning are Dr. Ken Ouko, who is a sociologist and a lecturer from the University of uh, Nairobi. I'll also be joined by Dennis uh, Gedenji, a life coach and a youth mentor. And we also have uh, Skype, uh, Skype uh, Echo Dida, who's a gospel music artist. And with me here in the studio, uh, Dr. Regina Mwatha, a lecturer, Department of uh, Sociology, uh, Gender and Development, Kenyatta University. But first, let's go to Dar es Salaam. And uh, joining me from there is Tulanana Bohela. Tulanana, good morning. Welcome to your world this morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. What's the situation in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, this morning? Well, uh, well, the situation here in Tanzania, well, uh, to be quite honest, has been a dramatic around week or 10 days uh, here in Tanzania with the deaths of three MPs, uh, including the Justice Minister Augustine Mahiga. Uh, and uh, the buzz about town is the words that came out of the President uh, Magufuli just yesterday when he was swearing in the new Justice Minister. Uh, uh, the president questioned the coronavirus case uh, after there were animal uh, tests that were, uh, that were done. He said that uh, that these tests were faulty after a goat, sheep, and a popo samples were t tested positive for COVID-19. So uh, uh, these are the kind of things that have been ramping up um, around uh, social media this morning here in Tanzania. And so what's, what's the government saying regarding the numbers and the state of COVID-19 in Tanzania? Well, um, for, for the government right now, the, 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 the statement is still the same, that we're not going to go into lockdown. But Magufuli did announce that he had placed an order for herbal treatment uh, to come from uh, Madagascar. So as you know, President of Madagascar announced that uh, there was a herbal medicine that, he, that they had created that he say, claimed that um, is able to treat. COVID-19, and uh, uh, Magufuli said, in, and I quote, I have already written to Madagascar's president and we will soon dispatch a plane to fetch the medicine so that Tanzania can also benefit um, on, uh, from it. Now, we know that the situation in Tanzania is a little bit touchy. We were actually hoping to be joined this morning by some guests via Skype, uh, but they're all a little bit nervous because of, um, you know, the COVID-19 situation and where the, government, uh, where the government line is on, on, on this situation. Uh, is the government still a little bit sensitive to the situation? Well, one of the things that's uh, quite sensitive is, uh, one, the, the speculation over the actual numbers that are coming out. Uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny, a lot of speculation whether the numbers that are being given out by uh, the uh, government are in fact true and this was even heightened even more in the last uh, seven days when we saw videos uh, videos that were trending online of virals at night and and this and these were very disturbing images of families grieving uh, in the dead of the night this created an uproar and frustration um, by the public uh, and also online claiming that the deaths were there were more deaths than the official figure provided uh, we then saw the minister of health and as well as the prime minister respond to this uh, 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 in parliament by the uh, in parliament saying that many are dying yes but these are, are illnesses. These are they could be dying by from illnesses such as TB, uh, uh, malaria. Because this is the season where there are a lot of this is an explosion of of of, of these kind of deaths. Um, and then later we saw the chief medical officer issue a statement that uh, this protocol will be stopped and this will allow families to grieve and send off their loved ones. So yes, there's been a lot of sensitivity around commenting commenting around uh, COVID-19, particularly also so, uh, so because of a lot of fake news that's also circulating around um, online, especially on WhatsApp groups, and the government has been very heavy-handed on those people who have uh, released uh, fake numbers or anything that's false online that deviates people from the numbers that they have been giving, um, uh, that they've been officially given, uh, giving to the public. So, Tulanana, 
people in Tanzania are dying. The numbers have uh, gone up. What is the government's advice in terms of keeping safe or helping to curb the spread of COVID-19? Right. Um, the president himself uh, addressed this and said that, uh, well, well, what, what's what's important is that we uh, continue to preserve or to to, to keep the, the guidelines. So being able to wear the mask, for instance, that's mandatory now, as well as washing the hands and, and keeping social social distance. But something that he was very very keen on addressing was that I was addressing the fears that people had that the the fear is being exaggerated by the people online or by people who. Uh, uh, want to see uh, Dar es Salaam or Tanzania in, in lockdown. And so he was very keen to, to actually say that people should not panic, that people should not be having this fear, that people should continue working as per normal, uh, prioritizing the development of the country uh, and the economy of the country over um, these health concerns. Okay, Tulana, thank you. Uh, stay with us now. We're discussing social irresponsibility, and life seems to be normal in Dar es Salaam, uh, with people captured on camera partying and drinking. Okay, so that's uh, the situation there in uh, Tanzania. As, as you can see, life pretty much normal, uh, despite uh, the numbers of people who've died and uh, despite the spread of COVID-19 figures which have uh, shot up quite a bit in, in the last few days. Uh, Tulanana, we, we're seeing Tanzanians here partying. Yes. <laughs> so life, life is normal, as we can see? Well, um, I, I can attribute this rather to, to the kind of mixed messaging that's coming out of, from authorities. On one side, uh, there's this message of have no fear, continue with life, uh, uh, just take precautions, um, and which, uh, which is then confusing when we hear, for example, the, the health minister um, be more stringent and then we hear the president go, you know, re relax and, 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 and continue doing what you're, what, what you're meant to be doing. And so, um, um, but as we, I need you to, to, to reiterate here is that uh, the country is not on lockdown. Um, um, the only gatherings that have, have been banned have been around schools uh, and, and, and not mosques or churches or even bars. And so um, it's, it's hard to, for the government to mitigate and go space to space uh, and, and, and have people um, uh, maintain the social distancing. Okay, uh, stay with us. Let me, let me turn to Ken Ouko, Dr. Ouko from the University of Nairobi. Uh, Dr. Ouko, you're a, soci you're a sociologist. Uh, can you help me to explain yes. people's behavior when you've got a national public health crisis and at the same time we're having parties? <laughs> you know, human behavior is hard to restrict. And, and sometimes we are so used to our freedoms that when government or whoever it is or whatever condition prevails suddenly requires of people to tone down their behavior, then they start asking questions and, you know, uh, there's a bit of defiance that creeps in, especially when they are being compelled, not requested. And um, sometimes it's the messaging that matters, like somebody has just said, um, the messaging from government or from the authorities that are meant to you know, um, <clears throat> hem in that behavior would have to be packaged in such a manner that people understand that it is for their own good. But otherwise, the nature of human beings is that they tend to rebel, especially against authority, against government. So when you tell someone, don't do this, he thinks he can still get away with it. And the thrill of it is when he is being told not to do it, that's when he has more fun trying to do it. And um, the kind of resistance you've seen to these things is probably also partly because we have not sensitized um, our population to the nitty gritties of how this thing spreads. Now the government has come out with a lot of information in the last, I think, 10 days, two weeks, and people are beginning to understand. But, you know, typical Kenyans, now is when we're really thinking this has run its course and we can try out our hands back in the salons, in the restaurants, in the businesses, and that is creating a problem. Now, 
Uh, now, Dr. Uko, this disease requires that for me to be safe, I have, my neighbor too has got to keep safe because, you know, it, it's how society yes. uh, protects and preserves uh, itself. Isn't that enough incentive for people to behave well? You know, there's, there's always that moral consciousness about your own behavior. And sometimes when we do stuff, we, we engage in what is called individual behavior. You do something by yourself and then other people also doing their things by themselves. And in the process, we end up congregating and doing the same thing that we are not supposed to do. Now, individual behavior is usually the type where you don't care if somebody observes you. And even if they did, they'll probably not understand the justification for you partaking in that behavior. But we still proceed because it is what thrills you. You feel like your life should not come to a stop. And despite the dangers, I, I always allude to the case of HIV and AIDS when everybody got so much information about HIV and AIDS, but people still went ahead and had unprotected sex. And part of it is, you know, that divinity complex where you get to believe that this is not going to happen to me. And so you, you self-preserve, but you still go ahead with your life, your routines, your habits. And that is where we find difficulty in social behavior because if it's criminal or legal behavior, so to speak, you can tell someone, if you do this, we're going to jail you. But if you're telling someone stay at home, and if you don't, then maybe we threaten you with this, he'll take that risk because he knows also, legally speaking, there's very little you can do. As you saw, some guys are already saying, you cannot quarantine me because it's not legal. You cannot take me to jail because of ABCD. Okay. And that's why sometimes I think the policemen get frustrated and, you know, get out there and really do their thing. Because you're trying to save somebody's life, but he is not seeing that you're helping him out. So he comes out uh, engaging in uh, deviance or deviant behavior, so to speak. Okay. Uh, Dr. Oko, uh, stay on the line for a moment. Let me turn to my guest here in the studio, another sociologist, Dr. Regina Mwada. What are your thoughts about um, misbehaving in the midst of a dangerous pandemic? I think one of the... Uh, Ken, Ken has alluded to a lot of it, but uh, one of the other things I would like to add is that um, we are not a nation that follows the rule of law, and therefore we are coming from a space where Kenyans uh, are not people who have trusted what government is saying, so they sort of won't listen to what is being said until it hits them. and. Now with a lot more communication and possibly uh, hearing about the deaths, people being uh, actually affected that their relative died or their relative got sick, is when it's hitting them that, um, yes, this, is, this thing is real. Okay. Uh, to Lanana, for Tanzanians, what's the motivation for partying? Do people recognize that uh, this is a pandemic that can kill, that does kill and that uh, destroys lives and livelihoods? Well, um, I, I, you know, really, um, um, on a personal note, I do not know the motivation. But then, to me, uh, as the doctor said, it's really difficult to uh, uh, for people to reassociate or to completely take away from something that they are completely used to. Their their, their social makeup is to be friendly, is to to gather. Um, this is the month of uh, uh, Ramadan. There was Easter, and then there was Ramadan. To take away things where people are uh, coming uh, coming together is, is quite quite difficult for a lot of, of Tanzanians and for a lot of East Africans just in general. And so, um, and then on top of that, when we have uh, messaging that isn't quite strict, quite clear that one should not do X, Y, Z, um, and uh, when we're having messaging that says, you know, don't worry, actually, it's not that big of a deal, uh, just take care of yourself, uh, and there's no uh, big brother sort of like watching you, it becomes uh, quite difficult for people to adhere to, uh, to, adhere to it um, as such. Especially, I think, if we are uh, quite uh, honest, that clip that you showed there was from a different part of um, the country. This is, uh, 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 presuming, the north of the country. Uh, and, to, uh, and if we're not in Dar es Salaam, it becomes very difficult for people to actually associate. Here in Dar es Salaam, this is something that we talk about almost every day. Um, but whereas when, if, you, if you compare to statistics um, that come out of, for example, Arusha, where you have two, three cases, or Kamera, where you have one case, where people can then justify that 
that's so, not something that will affect them. So, so Tulanana, just finally, and just watching those pictures, it's a very chilled out Tanzania. Can you just remind us, what are these safety measures in place for people staying safe? What's the rule about masks and about social distancing? Because there was none from those pictures there. Yeah. Well, um, for that, uh, I can tell you that uh, for that, um, uh, the regional commission uh, has said that everybody must wear uh, uh, must wear masks. And then we had that reiterated for the entire nation with the Minister of Health that if you can, please wear masks wherever you go, especially when you're going to uh, uh, gatherings or places where there are a lot of uh, people. Um, not to gatherings, but to people's places where there are a lot of people. Another rule is to have water, water um, washing stations with water that's flowing and so for people to wash your hands um, in every uh, business or public place that there, there is. And another rule is to try and keep social distance, especially um, um, in places like uh, transport or in places where there's going to be uh, gatherings. Okay, Tulana, thank you very much indeed. Please wear your mask. Stay safe. <laughs> now, uh, Dr. Ken Oko, let me come back to you. We, uh, I think uh, Dr. Moda here mentioned about uh, the, the, this whole issue about loss of trust with government. We also have a case of, yes. or do we, let me put it this, do we have a case of a government behaving badly? <laughs> you know, citizens are usually very observant and right now especially now that they have a lot of time in their hands and people at home they'll watch every move made by every government officer you know in representation of the totality that is government um you, here you are trying to tell people to change um, their routines there are three things about human behavior that are very hard to change the routine the habit and the conventions and so you're telling people <clears throat> run away from normalcy and do things differently but you as government you still seem to be doing things the same way you always did them so the citizens will sit back and observe you and then make their own conclusions. And like, you know, Kenyans on Twitter and Kenyans on social media, they can be very vicious. So they sit, they observe every little move that government makes. And then they start saying, oh, government is still business as usual. So why are they asking us to change our lives? And the, the amount of criticism that's coming out of the, of the citizenry right now, especially in the Kenyan uh, context, is partly because when government is handling this behavior, um, they are not really taking care of their own PR, their own image. And so you find ministers and government officers, you know, bungling with their statements and saying all sorts of things. But um, either way, what matters the most is that government should portray that feeling that we are here for you. And that's what Kenyans are not feeling. You know, last week there was this uproar about, you know, the accountability and stuff. And you can imagine how irritating it is for the citizenry to be told you stay home, we are trying to get, take care of you, but then you see people drinking tea and doing stuff, you know, worth millions of shillings, and that creates a problem. Okay, thank you, Dr. Oko, stay with us. Now, 21 young men and women were forced into quarantine after they were reported to be uh, to have taken part in a photo shoot. The youth were arrested near the Nakuru Golf Club. Uh, at the time, Nakuru West Deputy County Commissioner said the young men and women were taking lewd pictures and were contravening the government directive on gatherings to curb the spread of the coronavirus. The 21 were taken to the KMTC quarantine facility in Akuru. President, the minister, and all leaders of this country are talking about the dangers surrounding COVID-19. And uh, all the leaders all over are talking about the, the, the social distancing, to keep social distance and wear masks. And uh, these boys and girls did not have uh, masks. As you see them, they do not have masks. They were photographing themselves without masks. They were mixing and mingling without masks. And therefore, they were going against the public health uh, uh, social distance directive and those are some of the things we will go to to ensure that it happens and I want to call upon all Kenyans to observe the guidelines rules given by the Minister of Health and the public health officials. So Dr. Moda as you've seen there quite a strong appeal by uh, government how from a sociologist's point of view do you explain this kind of behavior? Uh, I think uh, 
one of the things uh, that crossed my mind immediately is how are we communicating COVID-19 to the youth? Are we communicating to them? They have their language. Have we used their language to communicate to them? And the gadgets that they use, they are always on phone. Um, I don't know if you are sending messages to them on what this is all about because they don't watch TV. Uh, they don't listen to radio. They possibly have seen or heard their parents telling them stay at home, close, school was closed. And when we talk about youth, um, we have different categories. We have 15 to 18. These ones are in secondary school. Uh, they are doing their A-levels for those who are doing a different system. So these are children at the parents' care. So uh, you have to connect this youth with the parental messages that they are getting and parental care and parental instructions. So par parents too have a role to play? Parents too have a great role to play when it comes to youth. When you talk about 18 to 25, and the, one that the ones that were shown there look like they're around 13 to 25, 18 to 25, these ones are in colleges and in tertiary institutions. Again, they are children living with their parents. What is the instruction from the parents? So we cannot um, condemn young people and say that they are unruly or irresponsible if we have not communicated to them. And if, as parents, we have not taken uh, full care and responsibility. Sometimes, of course, they run from away from home and disappear a bit, but... Um, we cannot put the full blame on them. Uh, there is the, another youth that is 25 to 35. These ones, some of them are the young men in bikers you see in town. They are people who are hawking. They are people who are, also they are young lawyers in, and journalists even, and they go to work. They don't have a lot of money, for instance, to go partying. So um, when we talk about breaking the rules. I think one of the question I ask myself, how we communicated to them? I don't know. Okay. Um, Dr. Uko, to you, in terms of messaging, um, as Dr. Mother explaining there, maybe did we need, did this message need to be broken down at targeted particular groups of the population? W what's your view? Yeah, messaging is very important. You know, when you talk about communication, um, usually it starts off from interpersonal communication. What are people telling each other? And what are you telling your spouse? What are you telling your children? What are your friends telling you? And these things that we tell each other during interpersonal communication, we, we glean them off government, we glean them off official information sources. So when, when the information is corrupted or when it's not straight or when that information is somehow substandard or not packaged, you know, to suit people, then they'll create their own avenues of information. And that's why with this particular issue, this pandemic, you've seen a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, people are coming up with all sorts of stories and saying, oh, this can happen, this can happen. And that's because there's a specific lack of conciseness in how everything is supposed to be done and how this, you know, the pandemic's protocols are supposed to be handled. Um, when, you, when you don't package the information the way it's supposed to be, you know, Take yourself in the case of the politicians, the leaders, when they campaign, when they go out there, they tell you all sorts of things and you choose what to believe. And what to believe depends on your you know, personality configuration, level of education and stuff like that. So government should never assume that everyone shares the same socioeconomic you know, um, characteristics. Because okay. there are people, you, I think you saw in the paper the other day, the Daily Nation was saying that there are people in Lamu who have never heard of you know, the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Dr. Oko, still with us. Now, yes. um, the health seers, Mota Hikagwe, uh, the main man at the, at the front of uh, the information sharing, has said that uh, so far, no one between the ages of 15 to 30 years has died from COVID-19. He therefore urged the youth to keep safe and avoid gatherings. People think that uh, when you're young, you can't get the disease. But you can see that we have cases of 0 to 4, 0 to 14. In fact, we have cases as, as young as 2. You know, that's the case we have. When you look at the age groups, just in terms of the, the disease, you can see the 15 to 29, and these are the young people, you can see 
that they have got, uh, they, are, they are getting the disease. The 15 to, uh, to 29 group. And it's very mobile. These are the people who in nightclubs and, and so on and so forth, in pubs, in the evenings. And you can see now why curfew is, uh, is an important part of the measures that uh, we have taken. The infected persons. And you can see that uh, between 15 and 30, there is no death. What it tells you is that this group is the one that can spread the disease. Instead of, uh, uh, instead of contacting other people, distance yourself from them. Okay, a direct message there, Dr. Mother. What, what, what do you make of that, uh, that little clip? Uh, it's actually true. You know, uh, youth, the youth are people with a lot of energy. They have energy in their head where they are thinking and planning a lot, but also energy within their own bodies. So they have a lot of energy to expend. And the way we direct this energy for these youthful people is very important. We must ask ourselves, how are we directing their energy? Is it going on the negative or on the positive? towards um, socializing, uh, towards keeping, uh, uh, sorry, towards keeping social distance, towards wearing masks, and all that is required. The question then is how do you keep them engaged? And then they are also observing this. That, that will definitely happen at home. So different homes take uh, different measures. And it's true, they can spread to the older people. I totally agree with the health minister because they are up on top of energy. They have good health. They don't have um, diseases that are, uh, you know, are symptomatic like diabetes, like high blood pressure and others. So they, they, they can be very asymptomatic. Uh, and that's why they need to keep away from the older people. But social distancing, uh, I mean, for themselves, getting close and parting, it, it all has to do with who, who is responsible and which, it, which age okay. group are we discussing. Do yeah. Uh, Dr. Uko, let me come to you. We had a big campaign around HIV AIDS, which was uh, quite successful. Have we learned lessons from there in terms of how you rally the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the society around such an such a uh, yeah. epidemic or, or, or prop health problem? Dr. Uko, Dr. <laughs> okay. Uh, le let, me, let me cross over to Uganda now. I believe uh, Mr. Sebukulu Simeo, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Good morning, brother. Okay, now welcome to your world. Now you're a social worker and you're also the uh, public uh, relations officer for the National Association of uh, uh, Social Workers of Uganda. Tell me, have Ugandans been behaving well compared to Kenyans? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Julius. Uh, nice to be at the show. Uh, for starters, Uganda has been doing quite well. Uh, we haven't registered any death. Uh, we have about 88 cases currently. And uh, for now, I cannot really tell uh, in comparison to Kenyans because uh, those in Kenya, you people in Kenya know how the Kenyans have been behaving. But I can be confident to say that back here in Uganda, uh, the masses have been adhering to the guidelines given by the World Health Organization and the guidelines passed by the government of the Republic of Uganda. Um, the social responsibility factors will still come in. Of course, there are those cases. Uh, yesterday is when I got an opportunity to have my eye out to the road after the lockdown was called. Uh, and the instance was to really find out how do people behave in terms of curfew. It was 10 minutes past curfew. I found just a few people trying to walk by the roadside. But the security agencies have done a very, very great role in trying to implement and enforce the laws, uh, but at the same time, the guidelines given by the Ministry of uh, Health. So currently, we've, we've been doing good. Uh, no public transport. Uh, taxis are not operating, but the borders are, uh, borders are not operating equally. Uh, shops are closed. People are just home. 
so uh, we've been doing quite well. Okay, um, let's see how well you've actually been doing, <laughs> Mr. Simeo. Stay on the line for us. Now, it's not just in Kenya, as we've, we've discussed in there, where we're facing cases of social irresponsibility. In Uganda, the Kampala uh, the, uh, City Authority has been forced to take drastic measures against clubs and bars because Ugandans just really love to party after party. We are putting seals in order to prevent people from not accessing that facility again. Because it's common in the city, when you just go and talk to people, they will go away, but at the same time they will come back. So it's an initiative to see that we block people from totally not coming back to their facilities and shall remove the facilities after the 30 days. We are going to be arresting from the proprietors of the bar facilities, the managers, and even the people that we find up uh, drinking those bars. And all will be charged in court for contravening the presidential directive that, that has banned. Mr. Simeo, according to these pictures here, your young people are still partying. Well, uh, Joseph, I haven't gotten the opportunity to look at the pictures you're saying in the first place. Uh, but like I said earlier, uh, the government of Uganda issued guidelines. We've been having quite a number of presidential addresses to the country. A couple of them, I think we are making about 14 or 15 now since the lockdown was called on. Uh, so the directives are literally passed every single time and we're getting new directives. Actually, as I speak to you, we're expecting the president to address the country either tonight or tomorrow uh, since the 21 days lockdown that he gave uh, the, is actually coming to the end uh, tomorrow. So I haven't seen uh, the pictures of people partying, but one thing I can say, there are those cases of social responsibility, like I said. If there are those that are partying, the problem has been that most of them are doing it in their houses because people are now turning their houses into bars. So they'll buy alcohol and then invite through friends to party in there. Now the security agencies have um, come on board to try and enforce most of these guidelines given. But now the problem is people are having some bit of meats because when you have meats, then people do not try to look at the other side of the story. People are being told there is no cure to uh, COVID-19 yet. But Uganda has actually discharged about 45 cases or patients of COVID-19. So um, the masses are asking themselves, how do you get cured uh, of a disease that has no cure currently, like you're saying? So there are those cases, especially those that are distant out of Kampala, the city, because the focus has mainly been in the city, not neglecting the other districts, of course. But I mean, Kampala has the biggest number of uh, people in Uganda, about 1.3 million people. So uh, there are those cases of myths and people need to be sensitized the more so they can get to know how does someone get cured of uh, COVID-19, even in the absence of a cure, like the World Health Organization does say. So, so uh, that, that is the challenge. So, so Mr. Simeo, obviously compared to the situation in Kenya, I would say that confidently Ugandans are pretty much well behaved. The issue is, what is it that the government is doing differently to ensure that people do follow guidelines and they do behave? Well, uh, one thing I can say is we were lucky uh, to be one of the countries that registered the first case later. Uh, because So it gave us an opportunity to learn from the countries that had gotten this new pandemic. So we looked at the Western countries, uh, we looked at some African countries that had registered their first cases, and that played to our benefit that the government took drastic measures. I can say uh, the health system in the country was ready, so they prepared enough, but what they did differently is to call the lockdown on early enough. Just a few cases, as soon as we got about two cases, the president came on board and uh, uh, put in place uh, measures. But most importantly, the call off of public transport has played us a very, very huge benefit. And it has played to our advantage. The taxis are not operating because most of the people work in the capital, that's Kampala, and they travel by public means. So with the fact that they called public transport off, uh, taxis are not operating, but our borders are not operating, 
uh, as they used to. So that played the benefit and it restricted the transmission. And um, it, it also did play because when you call off the public transport, then people have no choice than to stay in their houses, uh, say for those that can operate or work from home. A few of them have been walking to the capital, but still the president came on board and said uh, they need to restrict the movement of those in the capital. So the political structure has been very, very, very hard, I can say, for lack of a better word, has been hard and, into and, implementing these guidelines. Uh, and so just yes, br Julius. briefly, Simeo, we noticed that in Uganda it's the president himself, not the health ministry, that is leading you know, the, 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 the information campaign, for example. What difference does it make when it's the head of state himself who is doing that? Well, um, that gets back to uh, the community sanction. Uh, in Uganda currently, it is quite absurd, but everything rotates around the president. I, I, I will be confident to say uh, the president does appoint uh, the minister. So uh, when the president comes out to broadly speak, it communicates harder, it communicates tougher. Because we've had cases where the ministers themselves have had to violate the president's directive. For example, the government of Uganda restricted that you're not authorized to mobilize people and give them food uh, be, or exercise the spirit of Ubuntu by just giving masses food. And the president said that that alone will be attempted murder and that kind of person will be convicted in the courts of law. But some honorable ministers have been witnessed and captured on camera bringing masses together and giving them food. So the president coming out to uh, be the one to give these directives does get back to the political command that we have in the country. But at the same time, what people most likely get uh, succumb to or resilient to in respect to what uh, the political leadership is about. So the okay. president does speak and command better than the minister, since we've seen most of the ministers violate these rules themselves. Okay, Mr. Simeo, thank you. Stay on the line uh, with us. Let's uh, see what our viewers have been saying to us, our hashtag new normal. Uh, you've been sending us your feedback, and here are some of your comments uh, this morning. Uh, we've got uh, this one here coming from... Uh, this is, uh, first of all, yeah, this, this is what we asked you, actually, first of all. What would you do if you knew someone uh, was breaking the curfew, isolation, or quarantine rules? What would you do if you knew someone who was breaking those rules? And here's what you've been saying. Well, advise him or her the importance of the rules politely. That's from Matthew Zokelo. Another comment from Christopher Kitonyi. I will keep quiet because I may find the person I'm reporting myself and even my family members and neighbors being quarantined. Okay, you played safe. Thank you, Christopher. Another comment here from Adiedo Dennis. Well, I will treat them normally because if I report them, then the government will treat them abnormally with huge unnecessary bills. Again, the question of trust there. Thank you, Dennis. And another comment here from, this one is from uh, Ruth Minor. Nothing. I have seen a supermarket. Buyers getting inside without washing their hands and with no masks. So do nothing. Wow. Okay. Another one, Kalisa uh, Manyonge. Mine is those are the ones who are spreading the virus. Therefore, they should be charged in a court of law and be penalized heavily. Life sentence. Wow. A bit harsh. Okay. Another comment here from Duncan Kairegi. I need to understand why he or she is breaking the rules. Maybe they don't have enough food. Thank you, Duncan, for that. Another comment. Uh, this one, that, that's it for the moment. Keep them coming in. Our hashtag is new normal. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back. Have you shared your bongo points with someone who needs them? Remember to help a friend or anyone in need to buy food using your bongo points. Stay at home, but still stay together with your loved ones and friends using bongo points. Share your story or video of how you've helped a fellow Kenyan to our FB page NTV Kenya, Twitter page at NTV Kenya, Instagram at NTV Kenya, SMS 20686 or our WhatsApp number 745 925 -002.
Good morning, Janet. Wow. And you are? I'm Casey. Now help you with anything to do with your KCB bank account. Pay bills, transfers, statements. You're hired. I'm your internet banking security ninja. I'm your 24-7 personal assistant. Super. So, we can always talk about your account, online, whenever you like. Need a ride? Let's go. Alrighty. We can do anywhere, anytime. Register at your nearest branch for KCB internet banking today. COVID-19 pandemic has reshaped the family unit in unimaginable ways. We are all experiencing self-isolation, curfews, quarantine, cessation of movement, and stay-at-home orders. Children are unable to socialize, and schools are closed, leading to a major shift in parenting. The unintended consequences of these measures have led to immense pressure on the family unit characterized by an increase in gender-based violence, abuse of children, erosion of child protection, and excessive access to the internet. The physical, mental, and emotional well-being of a large populace is at risk, and this is having a negative socioeconomic impact. On Thursday, 7th May 2020, the Nation Media Group will hold a live virtual Nation Leadership Forum from 7.30 p.m. on NTV. With the help of a panel of experts, it shall delve into how COVID-19 has affected the family unit and what needs to be done to protect it and ensure it survives and thrives. Nation Leadership Forum. Engaging society, impacting the nation. The woman who stole his love from me, the one who took the man of my life from me, Grandma, is my very own sister. <laughs> I'm always going to be very grateful for what you did for my son and me. You've helped me protect him. What I still don't know, Fakundo, is if I should also protect him from you. By giving you his wedding ring, I'm returning your husband to you completely. I love him more than my own life. And that is why precisely what I want most is for him to be happy. You never wanted my granddaughter in your son's life! If you accepted their relationship, it was only because I threatened you! Neither your excessive makeup, nor your provocative clothes help you to be special. I said you're still the same woman without a heart and soul, without scruples. I'm not going to let you insult me. <laughs> I'm not actually insulting you. I'm just accurately describing you. The Three Sides of Anna Now, like many parts of the world during this COVID-19 pandemic, Ugandans have found a new love for exercises and physical training. But that comes with the risk of exposing themselves in crowded streets, especially considering that masks are not a requirement. When the president imposed the 14-day lockdown and night curfew across the country in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people in the city suburbs can be seen across the roads in fitness wear, taking part in different physical activities. Today, we took a drive around the suburbs to interact with the people on these roads and find out why they think these exercises are important. As some are sprinting, others are jogging and the rest are walking. This has become the trend every morning and evening as the sun sets in the Kampala suburbs. They say they are making the best use of the days spent away from work because ordinarily they would hardly have the time to exercise regularly. So we usually have daily routines from from work to home, get rest, then go back to work. I mean, to keep fresh and to keep vibrant. Instead of being home, you know, you do the, the chores, but of course they get done. Uh, we, the only th best thing we can do is to do exercise, like road run. Yeah, that one can keep us at least. Dr. Ivan Chisule, physician from Chirudu Referral Hospital, agrees that it's important to do exercises at such a time when people are spending a lot of time at home. The exercise will help you to, to cut on your weight, to reduce on your body fat, and in so doing it helps you to, to prevent what we call the non-communicable diseases, like diabetes, hypertension, 
obesity. Attack. However, in some areas, the joggers are congregating in big numbers, which goes against the Minister of Health recommendations on minimal interaction and social distancing. Dr. Ivan Chisule explains the danger in this. You may end up catching the communicable disease, which is the coronavirus. So what I would advise people to do is that do the exercise in the right environment where you have enough distance from each other and shouldn't be in a group of so many people. Maybe two to five people can be enough, okay, and you can do it in turns. Maybe some people can do it in the morning, others in the evening. These gatherings have also caught the interest of the authorities. The Health Minister General Tha Cheng has tweeted commending the efforts to keep fit, but she has reiterated the need to maintain an adequate distance from each other. Dr. Diana Twine, the Health Ministry Permanent Secretary, also has some words of caution for the joggers. Assuming that among those people that are exercising, there is one who is infected, I can assure you in that whole atmosphere, regardless of the fact that they are in outdoor, they will infect other people. However, police has decided to take a less accommodative approach and on Sunday they have dispersed the crowd that was doing exercises around the Northern Bypass and Mandela National Stadium. You are about a gathering of 30 people uh, carrying out to uh, physical exercises and even in Nambole, definitely we are going to disperse you and if it is uh, something repeated, then we shall even effect arrests. It remains to be seen if this new phone love for physical exercise will stay on even after the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted and life returns to normal. John Cliff Wamala, ANTV. Okay, Samuel, watching there as Ugandans keep fit. Is this a, a new thing that has come with COVID? A lot of people out on the streets exercising. Yes, Joseph. I, I, I need to be honest to tell you that uh, in Uganda right here, exercises were just a strategy of people earning themselves a password onto the roads. People were not genuinely exercising, uh, but because uh, of the restrictions, the social restriction and constraint, people thought they could uh, call their friends. So in pretense of exercising, then conduct business, either they talk uh, and have fun on the road. So many of those were actually captured, not really exercising, but people were just interacting in groups. And, 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 and I want to think these pictures must have been taken about three weeks ago. That's when our president came out to demonstrate something that I, I, I want to think must have gone viral. Our president demonstrating how you can exercise, probably in your house. Uh, he did that in State House. And he took quite a number of push-ups that I don't know if, Joseph, you could uh, challenge. But... Uh, uh, not so many of the people that uh, were going out to the roads to exercise really wanted to exercise. People were just earning themselves a password onto the roads so they can interact. That, uh, when police came up to prohibit that at the same time, we now having a change, not so many of those. So the ones that are exercising now are the genuine ones that want to keep fit. So okay. it's now an individual or just two, but the groups were dispersed, and we're not having those anymore currently. Okay, now, Simeo, thanks for that. Yes, I did, uh, I did try to face up to Museveni's challenge, uh, and, I, and, I, and I matched it. Now, um, you're a social worker. What is the role of social workers in, with this kind of pandemic in Uganda? Uh, well, Joseph, uh, like I earlier said, coronavirus is mainly a behavior disease. The World Health Organization has come to acknowledge that and tell us that. So in this situation now, being that social workers are, are, are behavior experts, and I'm grateful you also have a sociologist in the studio, and I've seen another colleague. In here, we try to mainstream social service delivery. So you notice in times when government comes out to call for a lockdown and confine people in the parameters of their shelters, uh, then basic needs are going to come in. Issues of food. So social workers have had to help government in mainstreaming, first of all, uh, do the needs assessment to notice who needs the food and who doesn't. Well, everybody does need the food, but in times when the resources are limited, then priority is supposed to be given to those that are most in want. So we do the needs assessment to try to find out um, who should get the food in the first place, but what's the best mode of delivery in which people could be reached out to be given this food. 
But most importantly, we also offer psychosocial support. Now, you notice that this is a new pandemic. People's jobs um, are at a standstill. Some people have been laid off already. Uh, others have colleagues that have uh, been quarantined. Uh, so we have in categories of people like children, for example, if their caretakers have been quarantined and put in quarantine. Uh, we have persons living with disabilities. We have the elderly. All these are vulnerable groups of people that rely on the support of the other people. Now, you find, you find out that when those other uh, normal human beings are put into quarantine, if I may use, uh, then you notice that uh, psychosocial support has to come in. So we offer some counseling. But most importantly, Joseph, so, there are issues of stigma. Like I told you, uh, Uganda has had to, Uganda has had to uh, send back and tell you about 45% of the uh, clients or, or patients that have been having COVID-19. So we have issues of reintegration. How do we get the people that have been treated for COVID-19 so, back into the communities so, so Simeo, if, without being... If, if I may just come in with uh, something a little bit uh, different. Thank you for that clarification about the role that you're playing. I just watched a clip uh, the other day with President Museveni describing East Africa as a house, with Uganda as the bedroom, Kenya as the living room, and saying, if you keep the bedroom safe, but the other parts of the house are not quite as safe, you know, then you know, you're not, you're not, you're not going to get much, suc much success. Uh, what was he talking about? Uh, well, absolutely, it's evident the president was just trying to mean that uh, as East Africa, we cannot keep safe until our neighboring countries are literally safe. Because you notice that currently Uganda's cases have been imported of late. Uh, we've received about uh, 26 cases coming from other countries. We have 11 uh, truck drivers that are Kenyans that have been coming into the country. We have 13 Tanzanians. These are truck drivers that have been coming into the country, and only two Ugandan drivers have been uh, gotten with COVID-19. So basically, that's evident the president was trying to mean we can't keep ourselves safe until the bordering countries are doing uh, what is expected and keeping safe. Otherwise, you cannot wash your head and then leave your legs and then go to bed expecting to keep your bed sheets clean. So it, it, it's basically that. <laughs> we, we, we can't keep safe until our neighbors oh, are safe. Okay, Sim Simeo, we heard you loud and clear. We will keep our feet clean so that we don't soil the bed sheets. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from Kampala this morning. It was a pleasure. Keep safe. Now, uh, Ken, let me, let, me, let me come to you. Uh, oh, I see that your line has, uh, has dropped, so let me... <laughs> I, Dr. Mother, I saw you... Uh, smiling as uh, Simeo was describing the situation. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I was uh, actually smiling because uh, what he said is true. The East African community, we are a community and we are one people. So we must keep safe as Kenya, we must keep safe in Uganda, in Tanzania, Rwanda and Burundi and uh, South Sudan because those are the communities of the East African community. But most of all, we have very porous borders. We are always crossing. Uh, if I take the example of Uganda, uh, some Kenyans have brothers in Uganda and sisters uh, uh, and some uh, people have family from Uganda, but their family, the other family lives in Kenya. So this, this uh, keeping across. Look again at Tanzania, our good neighbor again. Uh, we have the Maasai who cross because they, you know, they cross all the time with their cattle. They come back around the Kilimanjaro area. Uh, all that borderline, they, they cut across. So we are, we must keep each other safe. Now, a, a question I put to Dr. Uko earlier. We've mm -hmm. had other national health emergencies, uh, the big one being maybe HIV, AIDS, and, and, and TB as well. Are there lessons we've learned there from a sociologist's point of view in terms of uh, behavior change to try and keep a society safe? I think there are lessons learned. Uh, but remember also, this generation of Kenya, uh, let me just say Kenya, East Africa, maybe the world, maybe there aren't many people who have faced a pandemic of this nature. Uh, it's not our mothers, it's not our generation, it's not our children. Maybe our grandparents uh, experienced uh, the plague, 
Uh, so we, we don't know this life. It's very new and that is why it's a, a new norm. So we have to keenly listen to what is going on in order for us to be able to keep up with dealing with the pandemic. Uh, and we are not used to it. Okay. Mm. Dr. Mother, thank you very much indeed. Now, speaking of indiscipline among Kenyans, you might recall how 57 worshippers of uh, Mitume Seventh-day Adventist Church in Saboti constituency were arrested for contravening guidelines barring congregating. The worshippers claimed that they misinterpreted Justice Aaron Macau's ruling regarding alternative ways of worship. They claimed that they understood the ruling to mean that the ban had been lifted well, Transoya West Deputy County Commissioner Abdullahi Khalif said those arrested would appear in court before being quarantined. The judiciary uh, clarified that the High Court ruling directed churches to seek alternative forms of worship, such as broadcasting services online or on television. Three petitioners had sued, among others, the Attorney General and Cabinet Secretaries for Health and his interior counterpart. For uh, failing to adhere to the provisions of the Public Health Act and uh, for failing to observe uh, social distancing. We are going to quarantine them on mandatory and forceful quarantine for a period of uh, 14 days. Okay, now Ken, watching that report uh, of a few days ago, um, the church is a place of not just worship, it's a social place, and when that disappears, people lo seems like they're getting a little bit lost, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know, we've been having a big problem with that, because a lot of people are asking, why are you opening up the bars and the restaurants and not opening up the churches? And now you have that clash of faith and belief. But um, it is wise to remember that at any one given time, behavior takes a while you know, to condition and for people to accept to change. And a lot of people are usually very averse uh, to change, so to speak. So when you try to criminalize normalcy, then human beings are bound to, you know, re-examine themselves and ask a lot of questions like, this is what is supposed to be normal. I was conditioned and socialized to do this. If you take a case like, um, you know, you've just been talking about the different countries. Look at Dubai, for example. It's uh, one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world. But when it's Ramadan time, they don't engage in, you know, what we are trying to be told not to do. They stay indoors, they do their thing. When it gets to time for the mosque, they go to the mosque. And if you try to do <clears throat> the opposite of that, then you find yourself alone, like in a restaurant. And therefore, it's something they've been conditioned to do and to believe in. And that is the problem we're having here. This, is, this pandemic came with an immediacy that requires of us to, you know, suddenly shift our behavioral paradigms. And that's creating a big problem. So when you tell worshippers, for example, that um, they can see what else is going on in the country and they're telling them not to go to church, then they start saying, oh, this thing is actually satanic, you know, it's against religion and stuff like that. And you have a belief system which then has to be reconditioned for people to get to understand what is right and what is wrong. Okay, now am I, if I may tap into your expertise in terms of how do you bring about uh, change, social change or, or change in, in society, what are the steps that... Uh, need to happen for people to trans, you know, maybe to move on to transform into other behaviors? Yeah, you know, sometimes you need something like this pandemic, you know, to make people change because a lot of people are used to, you know, um, very, what is it called, um, um, strict routines. And you wake up every day, five o'clock, you do your thing, go to work, come back at 9 p.m. And that's what you're used to. So it would take something of a, you know, um, a gross seismic shift in the social networking and social um, 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 paradigm, paradigms of our behavior. And when you have a pandemic like this one, it would be something like a political shift. Say there's a coup d'etat or there's a, a revolution. Then people learn to adjust to the new <clears throat> standards of behavior expected of them by either the new regime or the new circumstances. Now, it's usually... A, a slow process. That's a problem we are having because socialization takes time. And psychologists will tell you that to condition even a dog, you have to train that dog to accept its name. If you buy it when it already had a name and you want to, <laughs> you want to change its name, for example, then you would have to re recondition that dog to accept the new name. And that's a problem we're having with, you know, um, 
the response to this pandemic. Earlier on, you, you were talking about HIV and AIDS. It took people quite a while, you know, to finally accept that this is a health problem. Most people thought it's a curse, you know, it's some, um, you know, somebody who has made a mistake uh, customarily or traditionally who is being punished by the gods. And then they realized, no, this is actually a sexually transmitted problem and that therefore you'd have to hem in your own behavior to have to avoid HIV. And that's where we came from. But it took a while. You know, and that's why every community created a different name for HIV and AIDS at that time. Um, like in Kenya, we had so many different diverse uh, responses to the to the what we call pandemic at that time. That's what we are seeing with the corona at uh, this time. Okay, Dr. Ken Uko, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Have a good day and uh, stay safe. Dr. Moda, now talking about uh, people behaving badly, I know that you, your, the other hat that you, you wear is, uh, is gender, equality and development. Uh, there have been some terrible things which have happened in that space, especially in terms of gender-based uh, violence. Now that's not only bad, it's, it's a dangerous kind of behavior, mm -hmm. the incidents that have been reported. Yes, yes. Uh, your thoughts on on that and the pandemic and uh you see gender-based violence uh happens in different spaces let us begin with domestic violence uh there has been of course an increase in domestic violence we may not have the statistics but when you talk you hear there is domestic violence and this has got to do with the fact that uh, people who possibly live in one space in the same house go out every day so even if you walk out um, for the whole week and you are not talking it's okay because you go and you come back in the evening and there's short time and then you you all go to sleep but now you are having to spend the time together so tempers may flare up tempers between um, husband and wife tempers uh, between even children and uh, parents uh, or they are the, the, the people who take care of them because they are spending a lot of time together and therefore there is need to look for a new norm of understanding how do we share this space uh, with the conflicts are you know are normal but the way you resolve them is very important so that they do not resort to domestic violence that they do not resort even to sexual violence even uh, in neighborhoods especially where neighborhoods could be very close uh, they do not uh, also become a uh, gender based uh, you know sorts of violence um, that's happening now you've spent a lot of your time in this space uh, helping to advance the case for gender equality and development is there a danger that with this pandemic and with what we're witnessing some of those gains could be lost. Uh, yes, they, 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 there is a danger in that um, the vulnerability, especially of uh, women, vulnerability, um, including of persons with disability who we are not discussing much, uh, including women, um, being eroded in that whatever they are facing during a pandemic never gets to be known. When you get to look at, for instance, um, there are a lot of small and micro enterprises owned by men and women. Um, how we need to understand during this time, how do, do women's and men's businesses uh, retain secure or survive the pandemic? Or how do they fall? Do men's businesses fall differently compared to women's and uh, it, there'll be differences for instance because you find that uh, in the failure of a woman's business maybe it failed because she had people to take care of at home but for a man he possibly um, did just get customers he went there but he didn't get customers for for the businesses now coming to rise again after COVID-19, uh, men have property they can sell. They can sell a goat at home and get a new capital to restart. But what will a woman be selling? She doesn't own land. She doesn't own a goat. Even if there's a goat she takes care of, she can't sell it. It belongs to the man. The chicken that she may sell is too little to be a startup capital again or to 
bring in any income that could drive her business. So we need to look at these things. So looking ahead to life after COVID, when we come back to normal, however long that will take, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of wounds uh, that society has to heal. Yes. Um, just give us your sense of <laughs> what, you f what you think we will have to deal with when that time comes. We will have to deal with a lot of things. Uh, we will have to, look, of course, deal with small and micro enterprises. We have to deal with uh, businesses, you know, medium businesses too. They are also hurting. And where are the workers in those spaces? What were they told when they went home? Are they on unpaid leave? And how are they surviving? So how are they even coming back? What happened, for instance, when people went home? Was there illness within that family? Did somebody die and how was that handled? Uh, not even just of COVID. It could be uh, they, they, they died because the family had no way of taking them to hospital. Uh, again, there are mothers who are giving birth. Um, if a woman develops um, labor pains at night, what is going on? You know, can they reach hospital? Is, is the baby delivered? And are they, have they gone back home? If a child died, that family will come out with a wound of a child who never was. Uh, so there are very many wounds. There are others who possibly fought uh, as, uh, as uh, married couples and maybe the marriage dies as, uh, totally or maybe others become stronger. You know, the bones become stronger so because of this. Quite a few things that we'll have to, yeah. <laughs> to address <laughs> post COVID. Okay, yeah. for the moment, we're still in the middle of it. And uh, I'm looking at your feedback. I think we've got some comments here which have come in regarding an, a story that we uh, ran earlier. And this is from uh, Joanna Thuo. COO Peke Hawana Job, this is in reference to the mourners of Migori. Uh, they should take it like men, not uh, the crybabies there. Well, <laughs> okay, Joanna, we hear you. Uh, another one here from David Katana. What would have taken Chakfanya? Not blaming all the time. Okay, Sante David. More comments here from Isaac Van Mosoka. Kifo, ni basic need. Okay, you're asking again regarding the Migori mourners. Uh, but when basically COVID did really hit hard in every sector, it did indeed. Now, time for a short break. We'll be right back. Basic protective measures as guided by the World Health Organization. Clean hands frequently with soap and clean water. Cover nose and mouth when coughing and sneezing with a tissue or flexed elbow. Avoid close contact one meter or three feet with anyone with cold or flu-like symptoms. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Avoid raw or uncooked animal products. Help the world put an end to the spread of respiratory diseases by sharing this message with a friend. Message brought to you by Sour Herbal Family Bath Soap. Working from home? No problem. Fiber Home has you covered with the fastest and most reliable internet speeds. Get connected today. Kazi lazima yendele. you husband and wife our world felt like a storybook we were unstoppable she never wavered from the vow she made to me on our wedding day i wish i could say the same the greatest gift 
a father can give his children is to love their mother. I'm saying that I never loved you. I'm always going to have to live with the guilt of what I've done to my family and the shame. Heaviness and a burning inside, it could be heartburn. Indigestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in six seconds and works on the six symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non-stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. The pulse of a nation's wealth can be told from its health. This is why Kiambu County is arming its health sector to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Ventilators are important, but the most important thing is access to oxygen. County number 22 is equipping its health facilities as it boosts capacity in the pandemic war. Isolation centers have been set up at the Kiambu, Thika and Gatundu Level 5 hospitals as well as Tigoni Level 4 hospital. Over 1,700 health workers in the county have been trained and facilities have been supplied with adequate protective personal equipment. Markets are being fumigated and decongested. Checks at roadblocks are being done all to ensure that the invisible enemy is kept at bay. On Monday, 4th May 2020, Kiambu Governor Dr. James Nyoro outlines the county's preparedness exclusively on NTV. Okay, we've got more of your comments uh, coming through on hashtag new normal and also our telephone and WhatsApp line. Moses Kirui, a problem is pretending you're not clever than all the world, you're not unique. Take precautions, time will come and it's coming very fast. Your ignorance will expose your nakedness. That's in reference to, would you report someone who's uh, uh, not observing quarantine or self-isolation? Another comment here, which comes from Carol Muga. People will only rebel against authority if they feel disrespected. There should have been mass sensitization to help guys understand COVID-19, then gradually introduce measures to curb its spread. Instead, they instilled fear, stigma, and threats. It never goes wrong. It starts wrong. Okay. Um, uh, mindful living, you'll say that relearning new strategy for effective risk communication surmountable task for the authorities. Thanks for that comment. And we've got another one here from uh, Nadechi. You're saying such a person must be known by the authority to prevent further local infection. I'm Walimundeda Vitalis from Busia. Sante Vitalis. Another comment from uh, Mackenzie Mayodi. You say, if I do meet this person, I would report him to a police station uh, for an arrest because he'll bring problems to those who are doing well. Okay, neighbor needs to stay safe for me to be safe. Okay, Martin, you say that nothing. It's been broken everywhere with the help of our security forces. Bars operating normally, so you will do nothing. Okay, what else would you do? Another comment here from Patrick Kiprotich. Well, exercise is good for immunity enhancement. That must be in reference to the clip from Uganda about uh, them exercising a lot. Sami, you say, I should not be worried about what I'm going to do to him but what he's going to do to me and my family in case he's infected with COVID-19 and family is fellow Kenyans. Thank you, Sami, for that. Uh, another comment here from Glancy Churchill. Uh, let them be because everything in Kenya is becoming an opportunity. Wow. Okay. And this one is from Shiko Mugo. You say, a tough question. Well, for curfew, you eh, to a policy. Isolation, that is serious because, uh, you know, it will endanger many people. So even if it's an immediate family member, I would report it. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Now, hundreds of movie fans flocked to Lithuania's main international airport on Wednesday night to enjoy a drive-in cinema just meters away from planes which have been grounded by the coronavirus pandemic. Between the films in a freshly closed uh, jail, in Vilnius and now we are in the uh, airport uh, 
uh, and this is the way where we can people can watch safely, watch the films, but at the same uh, same time to feel a little bit of sense of this uh, uh, excitement when you are start uh, when you're going to travel, when you go to the airport and you can see all the planes. But uh, to travel in our days in the safe way to travel uh, watching the f uh, through the films. To, uh, Great idea. I hope uh, JKIA authorities are watching that. Eduardo Cobra is a Brazilian artist internationally known for his colorful murals. But now he's off the streets due to the lockdown over the coronavirus. He paints a mural that emerged from rethinking his creative process, one that preaches faith and promotes solidarity in his native Sao Paulo. Very nice. We also saw our Mombasa artists do something quite similar and quite nice. For football fans who are unable to attend stadium matches because of COVID-19, Munich-based Victor Raz has developed a mobile application to cheer on your team remotely and experience the atmosphere of the stadium in your living room. During the match, users can press four cheering buttons in the application. Clapping, whistling, cheering, singing. The more fans react with their phones, the louder the volume the app gets. That's a fantastic app, but if it gets in the hands of your children in the house uh, under lockdown, hi, Kopekeako. Adrian Sanchez polishes his jams and pirouettes. William Robleo unleashes energy onto his violin. And Lady Laura Moya and Daniel Gregorich train with their sights set on Tokyo. The COVID-19 pandemic may have altered the setting, but the Cubans continue to pursue their dreams from their Havana rooftops. Okay, I've got two new guests joining me now. Dennis uh, Gedenji, who is a life coach and a youth mentor, joins me via Skype. We also have Echo Dida, who is a gospel music artist. Let me start with you, Echo, first. Good morning and welcome to your world. Shambam. <laughs> Karibu. Now, first of all, let's start with uh, Kuliandaji Uko Quarantine. Can you tell me the story of what happened to you? Uh, I was a bit of time. Because I was, uh, was going to fetch medicine for my wife, who had high blood pressure. And I was a bit time, so I was going to go. Did you get it? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, to to Kapel kwa police station and then later on to Kapel kwa quarantine. Na quarantine blinda wapi? Ah, uh, KMTC. Eh, hey, maisha alikuwa juko? Ah, uh, kuna kuna both sides, kuna positive side na kuna negative side. And uh, basically I think mean <laughs> ilikuwa ni amazing because I, I found friends hata hata ndani ya jela nilipata marafiki <laughs> and uh, we shared a lot uh, the things siko najua about life nili get to get from your perspective nikiwa huko ndani and kwa jela na pia nikiwa nikiwa quarantine made a lot of friends jua liko from different places kuliko na watu wametoka madhare kuna watu wametoka huruma then kuna watu wametoka kawangware different places kawa west tukiwa quarantine so what are some of those things ambazo uko ujui Abazi liku surprise. Ambazo? Uh, Umesaba some things that you learned ambayo pengine you didn't know. Nivituka bagani hivu? Yeah. Uh, I realized, uh, for example, nikiwa, nikiwa, nikiwa quarantine ili realize. Wow, there, there's a lot of stuff uh, we do take for granted. Especially freedom. The fact that unuza amuka, uendo fanya ABCD bila kulizwa because you are grown up ulizi umetoka wapi unaenda wapi kwani umerudi saa sa fulani you get it and then now here you are a grown up and you're in a in a, in a forced quarantine where always itoka sasa zile unataka always rudi sasa zile unataka ni ukae kwa room throughout the day tulikuwa tunaka throughout the day kwa room the only time unatoka nikaenda kukula peke yake ama ukienda ukienda shower na sasa ulisema ule kulikuwa na some good things na some bad things. Hebu give us a bit more on that. Uh, good things ni na kumka kwa na kuna time si kwa na 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 hakuna okay chance anianze na bad things. Uh, kulikuwa na shortage ya sanitizers. Hizo 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 za kupaka kwa mikono. Kulikuwa na shortage zao, kulikuwa na shortage ya masks, face masks. So actually jua tuko tunapewa face masks huko. Na tuko tunapata sanitizers. I thought sanitizers inafaa probably in everyone's room. Yeah and your fact that watu wana kwa charge 2000 bucks per day. Yeah those are chance I mean those were the remedies. <laughs> uh the good things ni I made friends tulikuwa na tulikuwa na time tulikuwa tunaweza tunaweza ongea through phone calls nini we shared a lot uh of stories na 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 na, na food tulikuwa tuna 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 tuko na pato food na na opishi 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 alikuwa achesi nikaa kwa comedians opishi bora <laughs> okay and kuna pia um, cops kuna time nilikuwa nilikuwa naulizia kuhusu sanitizers one of the cops akanipatia yake actually and we know at the moment CRT pia wako mafutani hivyo CRT yes. wako wako wako, wako na pesa hivyo is time sense ndani kama kuna mtu ana find it easy ki economy na, kimfuko na, na sasa analia mfuko mmoja baada alinipatia sanitizer yake imagine a whole sanitizer akanembe chukua hii mimi ndio na kuno nyingine okay kwa hivyo kuna kuna polisi ambao bado wana wana sasa nikuulize ulipofika jela na pia quarantine uh, you are a known person usijui kama watu walikushangaa kusema huyu msee naye ana do amekuja hapa kufanyaje ya yeah, ilikuwa ni fun because okay, basically i think pain to give me a personality, personality ya mtu personality yangu inaonga ni the picture I've, I've painted and the picture of who i am out there ni mimi 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 star labda nikiwa kwa stage hii time zingine mimi ni raia so tulikuwa tuna have too fun hizi <laughs> time zingine mimi ni raia like it's so easy to uh, I'm, I'm, i'm approachable tunaweza bonga tunaweza chat tunaweza kachini so ilikuwa watu wako wanashtuka sana do alikuwa na fun kulikuwa na ma selfie <laughs> <laughs> na 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 pia alikuwa anauliza industry ugoaje kuna wale nilipatana nao ni ma ni, ni wasanii wanataka kuwa wasanii in future na pia tu watu wa Google mtukushe hapa na pale so si. but wengi walikuwa wanataka unafanya nini huku by the way unadu nini au ulipatikania wapi ndikaleta <laughs> huko sasa na sijui kama ulipata chance kidogo ya ku kuachapia ngoma huko ndani ah uh, atungeza cause ni against truth <laughs> kuimba ni vibaya <laughs> yeah hakuna 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 kujibamba okay huko ni ukanipa yako na ulitokaje quarantine ah uh, tulitoka tulirelizwa the following 
after three days, the third day, you need to to release your to release back to the to the to the stations to release you. Okay, Nasasa, let me ongele kuhusu bad behavior ama watu ambao hakutii sheria ya kafiu na nina nini eh, do you regret kupatikana nje wakati wa kafiu ah uh, hakuna mtu atakaka ku, kuvunja sheria to be honest it feels bad definitely okay 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 ukijipata kwa situation where you, you didn't intend to do something wrong and, and either way you are in it already may happen and uh kitu kingine nasema ni personally i feel like uh there are people taking a kitu is situation uh, overboard unajua kuna 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 watu wanaipeleka overboard to an extent na kwa ni ukipatikana sahi uki yani ni kama kukua nje ni a mistake by default to be honest sahi hata mchana tu unaweza kuwa uko nje ushikwe okay unajua for for no for whatever reasons uh, yani hata unaweza angalia ushinde okay social distance hapa iko ume, umefuatilia kila kitu but since si kama si si kwa supermarket nje kwa supermarket at least yo yo, yo kind of safer huko inaeleweka watu kwa tu nje tuseme hapo nje ya mlango sijui nje gate sijui tao nimesimama unaweza jipata umeshikwa like yesterday i almost got myself into the same problem again and this is on a sunday unajua niko niko town and oh. fact that niko town na niko na I had house with my family sasa so unajua niko na watoto and you know, people will just approach you right now and say they're cops and and unafanya nini hapa ni kama kuna watu wachukua hizi opportunity kuchukua hongo sawa echo so echo thanks for that tulia kidogo wacha ni ongea na mse mwingine hapa now dennis gedenji you you're a life coach you are a mentor you you do a lot of work with the young people now today we're addressing the issue of social irresponsibility and unfortunately some of those, uh -huh. some of those who have been caught up in that are young people uh, maybe flouting rules and so on partying what, what's your expl what, what what's your reading about what's happening to young people who are caught out in the wrong way by the law thank you mr joseph uh, i think we really need to look at this whole issue a bit differently because i believe Uh, COVID has just exposed what has been there in the society for the longest time, which is a moral challenge or a moral decay. But Mr. Joseph, I think we can address this with these questions. How do you communicate to a generation that listens with its eyes and thinks with its feelings? Our young people today respond to issues depending on how they feel then they reason later on i think that is where we need to start from and that is our greatest challenge but there might be also a couple other reasons for example uh, the youth culture of hostility peer pressure parenting and the peer influence on each other so so just on the first issue What, in your view, what uh -huh. would have been the best way to communicate to the youth about uh, this pandemic, its seriousness? What, what would have been the best way? I think the best way to help our young people is to appreciate what is called a norm. You see, when we look at the challenge of the generational gap, uh, the gap is there, yes, but not as the social media tries to... Uh, magnified because they are young people who accept the values of their parents so i think the whole thing needs to start from home we have an orthodox view of what norms are and uh, children need to be taught from home to internalize the values of their community and they also need to develop a compulsion to feel and to act in a certain ways So when the parents weaken the norms or when there are no norms at all or when there are too many other norms then that's where the challenge begins. So do you feel there is therefore a disconnect between parents and parenting and and young people? Yes sir. And that's why we are seeing what we are seeing today. But You see, the challenge is most of our parents talk to their children and they do not communicate to them. But that's not just the main reason. The other reason is our young people today, 
uh, are trying to develop their own identity. You see, the orthodox method was parents decided or determined what a child should do. But Mr. Joseph, today our young people are trying to develop their own identity to live at the age that serves to divorce them from the control of their adult. All right? And that's one of the challenges we're having today. They're trying to be independent by themselves, not literally listening to what their parents are saying, sir. And so Dr. Mother here in the studio was reminding us uh, earlier uh, about, uh, you know, this... That, that you need to communicate with these different groups in very different ways. What's, what's your experience? That's very true. Just like she explained, eh, uh, there's something they call a social development or so, uh, social development that different age sets have different needs. For example, uh, a 13 year old to a, around 18, uh, these people are literally guided by how they feel. And so if we have, we have a relationship with the parents that is intimate, it would be very hard for them to be influenced or manipulated by another young friend. Okay, because most of these people don't just learn from what they hear from their parents, they also learn from what they see from the parents. We say we call it, they learn from patterns, not necessarily what they hear. So if there was an intimate relationship between the parents and the young people, then it would be very hard for anyone outside to manipulate them because the parents will have already filled an emptiness in them for belonging and, now, and they need to be finished. And now, Dennis, I know we're reporting a lot about a few young people who are being caught out partying and so on, but can you give us a sense yes, of sir. what young... Everybody has been hit hard by COVID, but specifically young people. What are the challenges uh -huh. for them with COVID? What kind of hit have they had with this pandemic? Uh, to them, they might not really consider it uh, a challenge because uh, them, they want to live their lives as usual. All right? So the, the, the pandemic is not a threat to them, number one, because they have not literally uh, seen one of their own die. So it does not hit them hard. I'll, I'll give a situation here. When a group of teenagers go out for raving and they, they got drunk and they are driving back home and they got an ex accident and peradventure one of them died, they are likely not to repeat it. But you see, if they go, come back safe and nothing happens, they would think that it's a norm. So most of our young people might not really take this whole issue serious because they have not really seen anyone close to them being affected. So they might still consider it a joke. Okay, Echo, let me come to you. Uh, Sasa, what, what would be your advice for where umekua, umekua jela, umekua quarantine, umekua nje, umeshikua? What, what would you be saying to young people right now, Sai? Uh, I'd say just, just stay home uh, to avoid trouble because kuna watu unachukua hii situation, especially to target what we young. A young person kum, 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 Kushikwa saini raisi sana, for, for whatever reasons. So just stay, stay in those ikeze kana. Na ukienda kubai food, buy food, rudi kwa nyumba, faster, faster nukaendani. Because, yani whatever unafanya, uneza kwa umesuma mapo, unajichikwa selfie, which usikia umeshikwa. And uh, I'd also like to say something about what uh, Moshimio hapo anasema, huu mzito wangu. About youth. Youth are actually hit by this situation. As much as it looks like the youth are not feeling it. They are feeling it, especially. Let me say, uh, what on a chita sports side at the moment, all the footballers can't go play, so economically, we hit so hard. And to do it, and how long event organizers, our young people, uh, artists performing, actors, say, at a particular, muna shoot, muna shoot movie, ama say, particular, muna ata, whatever, even if you practice social distancing, aita aita work, say, so we are hit. This situation is to affect, to be honest. I think yani, probably what we are doing is to have a million bucks, but there are jobs and rent that are waiting. If you have a rent, it will be sorted, ama, or else it will be in after two months, it will be bust. Okay. Uh, Asante, Asante. De Dennis, let me come back to you on that. 
again looking forward to we don't know yes, how sir. long we don't know how long this is going to last but uh, it looks yes, like there'll be quite a lot of pain even after covid for young people not if it's every, everyone else uh, repeat again come again sir i'm saying life after covid there's going to be a lot of pain for young people still ahead that's true uh, you see, i think the most young people that are here today are those that are directly involved just like what mr echo has said you see for example those who are playing football or possibly those who are involved in the art those people who are directly affected are the ones who are feeling it but you see now if we go back to people who are like in high school they feel like they are on holiday so they're not directly hit because they don't see the influence yet and possibly they're the group of other people that might really have a challenge now are uh, class eight the candidates and the form fours because then you see uh, the ministry of education has insisted that the exams will continue so those are also affected because they are not going to school so those two categories of people those that are directly affected are the ones who feel the heat of covid but mr joseph these behaviors are likely to continue because of what is called a youth culture of hostility. What this means is, this is a counter culture seeking to deny the values of the majority and seeking to distinguish themselves, for example, fighting and or obscenities and drinking. So the youth are engaged in this form of conduct just to reduce the pain of living on the bottom of the social order okay so apart from those people that are directly hit believe you me this behaviors might continue sir okay and uh dr mother if i could come to you on that point and also the one that echo making uh, is making that uh, these people are in a pressure cook at the moment uh, young people and it's going to be very difficult for society if it begins to boil up if this thing goes on for long yes actually um we must remember as a nation that um in the last census, 75% um, of our population is below, is, is um, 35 and below. So we are talking of quite a big number of people who are having this experience. In the urban areas, we have about three. Um, the urban areas take about, um, about just about 3 million below 35, and the others are in the rural sector which uh, we have not even addressed today. So um, what are they doing, all these people? They are young and they possibly have low incomes, they don't have adequate incomes, and they have their frustrations. Even like those in school, they are frustrated. When am I going back to university? When am I going back to school? You know, uh, because they are standard date and form four. They have their frustrations. Their frustrations even learning how for the girls to do their hair because now they can't go to the salon. You know, the small things, but make a lot of difference. Okay, uh, Echo, I'm coming to you for your last word. You're, you're an artist. You don't have audiences to perform to, at least uh, physically. Sasa, how are you keeping busy, waiting for the day this thing, Itaisha? Uh, let me be honest, it's tricky because I can't move uh, as much as, as frequent as I want to because I'd be probably uh, into studio more, uh, writing more songs and, and, and probably shooting more videos. But now, uh, I think mostly what we're doing is, like yesterday I had a performance online, so mostly, we, whatever we're doing is online, mostly. Okay. So, uh, Dennis, your last word to us and young people watching? Yes, uh, th this, would be, this would be my advice to uh, our culture now, uh, to all of us. I want us to give attention to our young people. And knowing what their hungers are and what they can digest is of essence, especially now. And one must spy out and elicit those angers. Number two, to the parents, this is what I would advise the parents. The key to communication is not what is said, but when it is said. You don't only have to give good advice. You have to give it at the right time. It's also important for parents to know when to give out what kind of message. And lastly, to our young people, you should remember that 
your future depends on what you're willing to let die. Learn to let go. Because there's a future that awaits you, and we cannot waste it today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, very wisely put. Now, did you know that you could uh, reduce uh, the stress and anxiety of lockdown by simply working out, doing some exercises, and so have a walk instead of indulging into alcohol? Uh, did you know social drinking due to anxiety can lead to addiction and delay the desire to seek treatment and interfere with the effectiveness of therapy or medication once on a treatment plan? And now, your, some of your final thoughts. I've got a few uh, comments here from you. Uh, this one comes from... Uh, what's, uh, let me see, uh, your name is uh, Moses Kirui. Your problem is pretending you are not cleverer than all the world. You are not unique. Take precautions. Time will come and it's coming very fast. Uh, Kirui, I believe we read this message earlier, but thank you. Uh, this one is from uh, Martin. Nothing. It's been broken everywhere with the help of our security force. Bars operating normally. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, another comment here from, I believe, is that the final one? No, we've got a couple more. Uh, Duncan Kairegi. I need to understand why he or she is breaking the rules, maybe not enough food, okay. And another thought from uh, Alphonse Omondi, Himambuya mask karibu nikione leo. I wonder what happened to you. Story for another day, Asante Omondi. Uh, Tommy Marx, report to the authority without hesitation if someone uh, gets away from quarantine and self-isolation, Tommy Asante. Uh, then we've got, uh, thank you, that's, uh, that's uh, the last comment. Uh, keep your comments coming in. Our hashtag is uh, new normal. And you can also reach us on WhatsApp or by telephone or even by Skype. I'd like to thank my, desk, uh, my guest today. We had Dr. Uh, Uko Alia uh, from the University of Nairobi. I've got uh, Dr. Mother here from Kenyatta University. We've also got uh, Echo and... Uh, Dennis uh, Gedenji, who joined us with some wise, uh, words of wisdom. That's it. We're back tomorrow with a bit of a workout at 6.30 in the morning. Join us for that with professional trainers, Alaphasit Nokua Hewani at 7 a.m. Until then, on behalf of my entire team here, it's stay safe, keep close to your mask.